I just bought The Last of Us Part 2. And it's the remastered one, or the updated one, you know, for the PS5. I didn't get it for the PS4, because I figured, you know, I'll wait. You know, I was excited, you know, the game came out, whatever. That's, whatever. So, I had to talk about this game. I literally just beat it, right now. And I have New Game Plus. And I recently just beat the first one, you know, just to get, you know, I knew I wanted to buy it. But I kind of was blurry, like, on the storyline a little bit. So I was like, you know what, let me play the first one. I got the remastered one for the PlayStation 4. You know, obviously, I played it on my PS5. And I said, then I'll buy it. So I did that. So I'm, like, fresh in my mind what's going on, you know, with Ellie and everything. Because, you know, I remembered everything, but whatever. Refresher. I played this game. I, I, I don't even know where to start. Like, this game is just... It, it, it's perfect. It's, it's probably literally one of the best single-player games, hands down, that I've ever played in my life. There's nothing even comes close. Like, and there's a lot of good single player games. Like, if you want to go back in the day from the PlayStation 2, you know, Jack and Daxter series, Ratchet and Clank, uh, God of War, uh, SOCOM had a good uh, single player, if you remember that game. Um, but it wasn't, it was multiplayer too, but, you know, but games that were strictly single player. Uncharted was very, very good too. I played the first three, and then I stopped because, you know, whatever. And what other game was just only single player? I can't even think of any other games um, off the top of my head, you know. I'm kind of just doing this video like right now because it's just like fresh in my head. But like this game, so if you haven't played this game yet, I will leave the video now because I'm probably going to say a lot of spoilers. So if you, you know, don't want to know about the game, I would just stop there. So you start off the game and you're in Jackson. And I forget, I don't know what state it was. I have to do a little more research to see exactly what state. I want to say Washington, somewhere out west. That's where, like, the game really takes, like, Washington, Wyoming, somewhere out there. Because it's not too far from the hospital that you're in the first one. And the game, it, like, I've never played, and I actually played a game where it, like, it fucks with your emotions. And um, just a second warning, there's a lot of spoilers. I'm not going to spoil it now. If you haven't played the game yet, please leave the video. I want to hear my comments. Oh, you spoiled the game for me. Whatever. Just second one. That's my last one. In the beginning of the game, you play as you play as Joel for a little bit with Tommy. Cool. Whatever. Casual, you know, easy beginning. Nothing crazy. You're not really dealing with anything. He's just talking to Tommy about Ellie and what happened, right? So, you play as Ellie. You're doing this uh, a run with your friend, Dina. And, uh... You're doing a run, and eventually there's like a snowstorm, you get stuck for a while, you find Joel. This girl named Abby kills Joel. Joel's dead. I'm like, what? So I'm like, okay, we're about to kill this bitch. Like, I'm playing as Ellie, she's grown up, and I'm leaving out a few details, but this is like the gist of it. So I'm like, alright, we're gonna fuck this bitch up. Like, I can't wait to fuck her up. But then, Naughty Dog, they fuck with you. They fuck with you hard. So before that happens to Joel... They, they mess with you one time. This is the first time they mess with you. You play as Abby. so And she's like, there, you don't really know what's going on. She's talking to her friend, Owen. And you don't really know what's going on between them two. Male relationship, past, whatever. So that you question that. And then you're playing as Abby. So you're like, okay, I'm playing as Abby. Hmm. I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'll probably meet up with like Joel or Ellie. Or maybe some other survivors from Jackson. And something happens, you know. And, and I was like, okay, this is cool. So you're playing as Abby, you're playing as Abby, you meet up with Joel. And Joel and Tommy save Abby. They save her. But she was looking for them. Because what happened was, I'm fast forwarding a little bit. The reason why Abby wanted to kill Joel is because at the end of The Last of Us, the first one, Joel killed Abby's father. He was the doctor at the end of the game. And he killed the last three doctors in the room, in the operating room with Ellie is. He's the one that's like, no, I'm not going to let you do it. I'm not going to let you do it. And, you know, you, you shoot him in the face because, you know, he's just standing there. And you kill the doctor, you take Ellie out, whatever. So, Abby was looking for them by herself. But you're playing as Abby, so you don't really know, you don't know that yet as, like, the player. So, it, it, it really, like, it, it so you, that's the first emotion. It's like, okay, I'm playing as this girl, Abby, whatever. And you're, you're with Joel and Tommy, okay, we're gonna work together, something's gonna happen, maybe, I don't know, whatever. They save her. Then... Then she kills Joel. So I'm like, okay, fuck this bitch. Why do you, but then I'm like, wait, why did I play as her? Like, I'm mad confused. I didn't realize it was going to be like some foreshadowing for the game. Like, I had no idea, right? So 
it, it, oh, that's the first emotion. Then you play as Ellie. You go through. It's it's, it's it's the time frame is in within three days in Seattle. So oh yeah, so Seattle, Washington. Oh, so I was right the first time. Anyways, so you, three days you play as Abby and you go through things. You you know kill some clickers. You you know you, you fight all these guys. Whatever you go through the whole storyline. Then after that, that's when you meet up. You don't meet up. You play as Abby from. So this is this is Ellie's this is Ellie's timeline. Same three days, and then you you play as one two three right as Ellie, and then after that, once you're done with Ellie, it ends at a cliffhanger, when where Abby comes in to their little base that they have outside Jackson that they're you know commuting from, and then you play one two three as Abby. So you're starting out from day one as if Ellie was doing her day one, and it kind of like conflicts a little bit because Ellie's looking for Abby, but Abby's leaving because of she's in part of this group and they're doing this. They want to attack another group. So then there's that, and then so you play as Abby, so you get to see her whole side of, you know, Joel killing her father. Uh, she she leaves the her group that she's in because you know she doesn't want to join it because she wants to look for her friend and like literally it's like a whole separate. It's literally almost two games in one. Like to be honest, Naughty Dog, get, this is a two this is two games. They literally gave you two games. If you played as Ellie, one, two, and three. They could have did that and maybe a little bit more as like what's going on for like part three and then you play as then you play as Abby. They literally could have done two games with this. Like a three part, like another part to is just playing as Abby and everything. And we probably would have bought both games because that's just how it is now. I feel like a lot of these games they just throw a game and you pay 60, 70 bucks, whatever it is now, and that's it. And it's like it is what it is, you know. Inflation, I don't know, whatever. It's not like we play a place to uh, play a PlayStation Two game like Kingdom Hearts or God of War. And the game is long as shit. You know what I mean? Anyways, like so they could have did Ellie's part one game, Abby's part second game. So you literally get to play as Ellie as a whole walkthrough, a little bit of Abby in the beginning as a little foreshadowing. I guess you're gonna play as um, Abby, which I didn't really think about. So you play a whole thing as Abby, and then you switch. Then you then you're fighting. You're literally fighting Ellie, and it's like. You're, com I feel like I'm confused because I'm, wait, I don't want to kill Ellie. Because you played as Ellie, even in the first, you know, in the first one a little bit, and then really a lot in the, in the second one. So you're like, wait, why am I fighting Ellie if, if I'm her? Like, you know what I mean? So it was pretty, like, it was pretty crazy on, on that end. So I'm like, what the hell is going on? So that kind of, that kind of threw me off. So like, you fight, you fight, whatever, you know, Abby basically wins, but she lets her go because she's with her friend. And her friend's like, no, Abby, like... Don't do it like you're better than this because she had like a trouble pass and that's her own thing. So like, so it's like, at first you feel bad for Ellie. You're like, okay, we're gonna fuck this bitch up. Then you play as Abby and you're like, damn, I kind of see her side now on why she killed Joel, which I kind of get. And it was part of the Fireflies, you know, the cure. That's part of it too. But the main part is because, you know, Joel killed her father, which is the doctor. So that's, that's, that's uh, number two. And then you're like, I don't know. Like, it's, it's so weird. It's like, I've never played a game where they made you feel like you're the third party and you're seeing both sides of the story. You're seeing Ellie's story and then Abby's story. And it's just like, it kind of puts you in a, a little like mind fuck a little bit. You're just like, wait, whose side am I on? What am I doing? Like, I don't want to kill Ellie. But then you play as Abby so long and you meet her friends and like her friends die and she's upset and Ellie lost people and she's upset. And it's like, like, who, whose side am I on? It's like, it's kind of low key confusing because then you play as Ellie and then you're fighting Abby at the end. And it kind of, they, and if you ever played um, Metal Gear Solid, uh, Son of the Patriots for a PlayStation 3, if you remember the ending of that one, for all my Metal Gear Solid fans, if you know, uh, it's uh, Liquid versus Snake at the end. You're kind of just in like this fight and it's kind of like that kind of fight with like Abby and and uh, Ellie. Why did I forget her name? So, you know, that to me was like, like I feel like that was kind of like a shout out a little bit like low key because there was like nothing around it was just like them two fighting and just the way like it was like the atmosphere it kind of made me think of that like instantly I was like this is kind of cool because you did have a knife but then you lose it mid fight and you're just fist so it even felt like even more and there's like no health bar so it's I mean you could probably die if you're screaming too red I'm assuming I think I was playing on the hard difficulty so you know it's hard but not too crazy I did die a lot side note but anyways, so, like, there's just so much emotion going on, and you see both sides, you're like, damn, I'm kind of on Abby's side a little bit, right? And then, and then you're like, damn, but, but Ellie's kind of like, I don't want Ellie to die. So, fast forward, you know, Ellie is almost about to drown Abby, and then she lets go, she goes away. That's pretty much the ending. 
but um, holy shit. And you know what's crazy? This game, so let's just go back a little bit. When you play any game, you know, whether it's single player, multiplayer, whatever, mostly single player games, you know, there's always a cutscene. You know, you do a little action, you fight a little around, you kill some people, or you shoot, you do whatever, you activate a cutscene, right? And you hear them talking, ah, oh, whatever. And it's always like, it's always kind of separate. It's almost like the graphics of the cutscene are always a little bit better than than the game a little bit. But the game was always good, right? Like, um, what was a good example? Like, God of War. They had, like, the HD texture or something on the PlayStation 2. And it looked phenomenal. On PlayStation 2 back in the day, way ahead of its time. They did that for Kingdom Hearts 2 as well. Where they had, like, the HD movie, um, like, graphics. It was, like, HD texture or something. I forget what it was called exactly. If you know, definitely put that in the comments. Because I'm not sure, but if you know, you know. So, they had that for God of War specifically and Kingdom Hearts 2. So, like, but it was always a big difference between the actual gameplay and the cutscenes. Which was cool, but like it kind of made you feel like weird a little bit. I felt I feel that way. But with this game, literally, there's so many times where I died because I thought it was a cutscene. So like you know, I'll be playing for a while, only like an hour or two straight or X amount of time, you know, before the cutscene, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm good. Like I put my control down for a minute, you know, because you know the PS5, you know, it's a pretty big controller and I have small hands. So like after a while, you know, I kind of get like a little like weird. So I you know I give myself a little break. You know, the controller's pretty big. So, anyways, so I put it down, and I'm like, oh, I'm getting attacked in the cutscene. I'm like, okay, you know, they're fighting, whatever. And it's like, then the square symbol's coming out. I was like, oh, shit. And then, like, I'm not pressing square enough, and I die. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, you literally cannot tell the difference between, like, the actual gameplay and the cutscenes. It's exactly the same. It's that, That's how good the performance and the graphics of this game is. I don't know if it was like that for PlayStation 4, like, on that system, because I didn't play it on that system. I'm playing on the PS5, and the one that they enhanced the playstation 5 so i can't tell you if you do let me know because I, I actually don't know the other game that did that too is ratchet and clank um the new one which is called uh, i forget the name anyways doesn't matter where like the cutscene like it would end and then there would no like you know screen would, like black out or it would stop or load or nothing there's nothing it just goes right it's literally in the game like it's right there so like doing that it was like i was playing a movie it was like it was like I was at the movie theater, even though I'm playing on a small monitor. You know, it's like I was playing the game, but watching it at the same time. But I was moving the characters because there was no delay. It was right there. So add that effect to all the the crazy emotion that they had with the characters, and then the graphics on top of that. This is probably the best single player game out there right now. I don't think there's any other game that competes. Maybe number two, in my opinion. But at the same time, I haven't played the new Far Cry, so that could be it too. The graphics with intense on that. I mean, the God of War 4, um, you know, that was good. You know, the graphics are hot on that, but the, the cutscenes is not the same. And if you, you know what I'm talking about, it's just there's really no cutscenes because it's the ga- the gameplay is the cutscenes, or the cutscene is, is the gameplay. And that's I've never really seen that in a game except Ratchet and Clank. But Ratchet and Clank, even though the graphics are absolutely like amazing it's not like a realistic graphics it's more like a galaxy spacey kind of graphics you know not that it's bad it's still amazing but it's still more animation like that not that it's you know what i mean so like way last of us the first one and the second one is more like life like you know real stuff and stuff like that so you know the game is just it's just perfect it's it's literally perfect i mean for me The only thing that I noticed about the game that I didn't like, and maybe it was because of the difficulty, was not that I died. I mean, I still died a lot. I don't know how many times I died, but I died a lot. The stealth. I felt like it was really hard for some reason. I felt like, like, I'll be, you know, crouched somewhere, and you're like, oh, there she is. And I'm like, huh? I'm like, how? I'm like, I didn't even see me. So maybe it could have been the difficulty, but I feel like The Last of Us 2, I mean, The Last of Us, the first one, I felt like it was easier to sneak around, you know? So... I don't know, maybe, because I played it on, yeah, I played it on hard. Yeah, I just beat it on hard, yeah. I don't know. Anyways, but that's that. That's my take on this game. And if you don't have it, you need to get it. This game, you, in, in, well, if you have a PS5. Well, I'm assuming it's not too different if you play on PS4. I'm assuming. I, you know, I, I, I couldn't say. But regardless, I, I think this is probably one of the best single-player games I've ever played. Even I even think it beats Kingdom Hearts 3 for me. And 
that's a whole other story. But that game was amazing too. But the way Naughty Dog did this is just. It's fucking a fire. It's fire. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, it's just. It's just so good. And I've never. And for me, I've never seen so much content in one game recently. Because you know this, whether it's Call of Duty, any game you think of, they just throw it, they, they make a game, here you go, and then they give you all the DLC shit later. This game does not need a DLC. I mean, maybe they could if they wanted to, I doubt it. I, I don't think the story is left on a, cl a cliffhanger, so I can't really see another game for it. I, I, I wouldn't... I mean, they probably could come up with something, but I, I don't think I see a point. And, and it's funny, like, I want to play this game again. There was only one other game that I consistently play maybe about... Maybe about once a year. No, maybe two. Yeah, two games. There are two games I love to play back-to-back. -back. Like, not back-to-back, -back, like once a year. And I just play it just because I love it. And that's Jack 3. I love Jack 3 from the Jack and Daxter series. Jack 3 is my ultimate favorite game. I must have beaten that game... Like, I, I couldn't even tell you. Uh, over 30 times? Maybe? Like, I played that game so many times. I love it. I love that game. That game is ahead of its time. And I, st and I still have it on my PlayStation 2. And the disc still works. So I'll play it on there. And I do have it. I have the, like, the remastered HD one, kind of, sort of, whatever. On the PlayStation 4. But I can play it on PS5, too. And uh, Gears of War. I love Gears of War 1 and 2. Those are my favorite campaigns out of the Gears of War series. But, um... This one might, I think this might be the third game I play, like, the storyline, just to play the storyline. Because it's so good. And it's, like, very unpredictable. So, like, even if, like, the storyline is the same and the, and the, like, the enemies are kind of the same, they always act differently. They take different paths. They do different things. They say different things. And it's, like, usually you can hear, if you play a game, you hear, like, the same five catchphrases. I feel like in this one, there's got to be, like, 20 different ones a character will say at random. And it's, like, I can't even remember them. And I just played the game, you know? So, like, that adds to it. There's just so many, like, little things that they did that makes the game... It just feels like a movie. And it's just... I guess I'm rambling. I don't know, but... This game is amazing. Anyways, I'm gonna end it there. Um, like, comment, subscribe, I guess. I know, I feel like everyone's doing it on YouTube, so I'm just gonna say that. But, uh, if you enjoyed the video, let me know. If not, let me know. Comment, subscribe, whatever. <laughs>